Season 1 finale, I can't believe it's already the end. I'm expecting a massive cliffhanger. It's tough because it's it's like it's just liquid. Yeah, show me your backs. <laughs> and they listen. Not everyone can be a super athlete like Yuji. Super athlete Yuji. Hey, get it? Wait, what? What? What just happened? Did he run so fast he knocked the light out of her eyes? Yeah, when she said she was gonna watch his back, emphasis on the watching part, she's just seeing it. Oh, I'm sure he's skipping his way over here. Just a couple minutes frolic from here. Just took a full blast. Oh no! Megumi was right. She keeps getting got. Oh really? This is power exposition? But now that I've said that, it gets more powerful. Oh no, tattoos you with really garish designs. <gasps> Terrifying. I was just thinking last episode, with the really great backstory we got on Megumi, that it would be really cool to see some, some of her as well. She has a very vibrant personality, but in regards to the trio, she's sort of been the least explored member, I would say. She's got this unbridled confidence, or at least the image of consciousness, the outward display of confidence. Very curious what her story is. Sad that this is the last time I'm seeing this opening. Still don't know what that shot is. Episode 4, Accomplices. True to the name. I like this is an RPG status effect. That's a good amount of time. Slow death. What a virgin curse birth? The death painting wounds, right, right. Yeah, humans will just make fun of your your weird back. You got a weird back. Is this a religious metaphor? We got cursed Jesus and the unholy trinity. Neither human nor curse. And you eat the flesh to get the power. What does she get? Power activate? Activation? From this? Using herself as the voodoo doll? <laughs> Stunned. That is actually awesome. Who can withstand more pain? Yeah, here we go. Right. We've seen this before. Solid. They share the same blood. Yeah, it all depends on how much it hurts, though. It's tough. So much for that. We have to get black flashed. Ooh, that's such a good combo. Very cool passive trait. You have to make me see this again, huh? And they're simultaneously sort of immobilized by pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did that wordlessly too. And she's moving just fine herself. If they die, does it get released? Or they have to willingly un un wing king? They care about something. Oh, he released it. That was fast. Nice. What did he just do? <laughs> he just like summoned the Nimbus Cloud for a second there. Oh no, you see my my biggest insecurity. My hideous back. <laughs> awesome. That looked painful. Awesome shot. 
Yeah, it was called Black Flash. This looks like it's about over. She got more. Damn. <laughs> that looks so awesome. So confident. Tables turned pretty quickly there on that one. Now you're two thirds. <laughs> I knew I knew that was gonna gonna happen. Following a car on foot. Full T1000 style. She's still going, she just can't turn it up. Oh, she has the arm. And she's deadly. It's funny how like <laughs> I often like feel bad for the <laughs> These laggies, they just get it so rough. They just exist as power demonstrations. These overpowered kids. Stop it, stop it, he's already dead. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> or are you? <laughs> I'm sure he's fine. He's fine. Well, he got a glorious death. His fist hurt! You know, give these guys credit, they know how to enjoy their leisure time. He knew that. Underestimating them once again. I guess there's no secondary plan this time. They're a little busy. She was never phased that whole time. She's been in this world longer. She's never really seemed to have any qualms about it. Like, I mean, it sounds bad, and I don't want to hold this opinion, but at the same time I get it and I can't really take issue with it. I've definitely flirted with this idea, and there are people who are really dear to me who hold this, hold this belief. That there's an inside and outside group, in a certain sense, and you totally devote yourself to the in-group. And the out-group can go to hell, and it doesn't matter. One, because you don't really have control over it, and two, because you may feel that the out-group is hostile or contains innate hostility. And there's definitely some truth to that. The world is not sunshine and rainbows. There are people who would gladly step over you or destroy you for their own their own game, their own in group. I don't think it's the highest way of being, but there's a lot worse. You know, at least you have something sacred. At least you're doing something good in there, which is taking care of your group, whether that be your family, your friends, whatever. In fact, that might be the only thing you can do. You can also connect it to Full Metal Alchemist. You know, you take care of the ones around you and they take care of the ones around them and that creates a web that encircles the world or however Mustang put it. As long as it's a priority waiting and not being used as an excuse to do terrible things to other people who are in the out group, which I don't think is the case for her. It's just where she's placing her, her emotions and her energy. Ma Oh, he's definitely in group at this point. To be fair, she didn't know, right? She knew after he was dead. It's also not clear that she doesn't feel bad about it on some level. It's just that this is more of a supporting thing for Yuji, it seems. Though it does feel genuine. It's sort of rough, yeah. He also just made a huge enemy. He's good, he's just sleeping one off. <laughs> this was a great mini arc for the three of them. <laughs> I am the danger. <laughs> I mean, it's a fair question. Eat it. Don't eat it, just hold it. <laughs> yeah, right. That works for everyone, you know, just holding. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, I'm just gonna buy this box of donuts, but I'm only gonna eat one. Just one donut today. That's how that goes. Yeah, how much is he really in control here? Yes. <laughs> yes. Maybe you can find some gyoza with meat in it. A restaurant that isn't embarrassing the legacy of taste. <laughs> Proud teacher. And a somewhat arrogant teacher. That's why I called you. Or we're starting the party arc? Here for that. Go to a drunk is sort of terrifying, admittedly. Oh, that's the end of the episode? We still don't know who the spy is. 
What done? You gotta tell him though. I mean, maybe they're trying to spare him guilt, but he deserves to know. I don't know. If you're trusting each other at this level, you can trust If you're trusting each other at this level, you can trust them with the truth. Oh no, is it gonna sell him? <laughs> it's the truth one way or the other. <laughs> or is he not hearing this? Oh yes, he's literally talking out of his cheek. Interesting. I definitely like these characters a lot more than I thought I would at the beginning. Impressive that Panda dominates her, or beats her. Where's Toto? We need a Toto epilogue. There he is. It's a promotion? Oh, they're like... They're promoting others. Awesome. I mean, solid choices all around. Epilogue Sampo! How else are we gonna do our Lost in Paradise dance? Now we know she doesn't block, so... <laughs> death. Your punishment is death. Mr. Gojo. Yeah, I mean, judging by the first season, it's gonna be huge. But it's not wrong, like, all the arcs in this episode, in this season, have been epic. And Glamour Shot! <laughs> Extra Glamour Shot! Glamour Solo Shot! Do we get a Juju Sampo? Juju Sampo! No! <laughs> so that's the end of season one, and it's been a really interesting ride. I'm actually kind of impressed by how much they put into the first season. I mean, I think what I've experienced a lot in shows is they have a setup, you know, there's the world and you're in high school or whatever, and then there are low stakes things that happen that kind of set the students up to understand their powers, and then it's maybe capped off by like a big thing at the end of the, the arc or the end of the, the season or whatever. But I feel like this show and this season didn't hold anything back. The stakes were pretty high, and the villains that emerged felt pretty big, while also clearly setting up an ongoing story that is going to be about the villains developing and the sort of back and forth between the Jujutsu Sorcerers and this League of Curses, who are also in a stage of development. It's a more complex system than I'm used to in these shows, and if you've been watching the series, you know I struggle with that to some extent, but I think what really shines to me is um, the characters, especially certain characters. Of most interest to me were Gojo, just as an awesome character. I think they, they did the overpowered senpai, in this case a teacher, extraordinarily well. To put it simply, he's just really cool. In both power and personality, and the two of those things match. And he's also a great sort of ambiguous character as this older figure who's definitely a guardian of sorts, but clearly has his own agenda going. And also I feel, as I mentioned in the past, seems like a point of vulnerability for the Jujutsu Sorcerers. He's like too good to be around forever. You know, if the roof or this, the floor was going to fall out from under them, that would be what falls. That would just be absolute chaos. And because it's so exciting to imagine, it's so terrifying to imagine, I feel like it's got to happen. Then Toto. Toto was an amazing surprise going from this sort of comic relief meathead to just being full of depth and being one of the catalysts of, of some really key insights. And I would say that those two episodes, mainly two episodes where Toto and Yuji fought against uh, tree, tree Spirit with the cameo appearance of Gojo at the end was probably the highlight of the, the season for me. Megumi also is a, is a great character, I think especially coming to life in the previous episode, fleshing out some of that backstory. I wasn't too impressed with Yuji at first, but he definitely grew on me. And I think part of that is he becomes more significant as he is juxtaposed with other people who are trying to find out where they are in the world. Yuji is a shining example of the heart, the fearlessness, while initially lacking some of the, the talent that the others have. And those are my favorites, but every character that's been explored in some length feels distinct and feels good. And I feel like that's only going to get deeper as the show goes on. And what's especially great is the inner play between them because there's this common thread running through the whole, which is something like seeking the meaning of their lives and all of them having different starting models, you know, an incomplete version of the world that helps them live and doesn't keep them just stuck and complacent all day, striving for something better. And then they complement each other in a way that they're, they're always pushing each other, each other to grow. And that's apparent watching their interactions, which is really exciting. This is just a guess, but I almost feel like there's a little bit of insecurity in season one. It's like, are people going to keep watching it? You know, are people going to give this show a chance? We better put everything in here. I think if subsequent seasons can match this intensity and then deepen the things that are already great, like the characters and their interplay, then there's a whole world of potential. I, I feel like the sky's the limit. Things I expect to happen, as I mentioned, Gojo being incapacitated somehow. The Jujutsu society falling apart because they are just not strong. They are at each other's throats. There are the clans that are not painted in the most flattering light. There's the quickness to dispense with Yuji, and I, I understand the arguments as to why they feel the need to do that and don't even think that they're wrong, but there's something lacking there. 
for me. There's something non-ideal about it, and I think generally shows are about people striving for ideals and trying to get a glimpse at what those ideals might be that are workable, workable and good in the world. You have an insider, you have people whose sole purpose is money, there's people who are attached to the old ways and, and class structure. It's kind of ripe for the picking, and I feel like it's going to take a cataclysmic event of some sort to waken them up to a bigger purpose in a sort of attack on Titan, we need a common enemy style of finding meaning. Do you know who the real enemy is, etc. It was only one season, but it felt a lot longer. Thank you to everyone who supported this show from the first episode, like a year ago, all the way through to the, the final episode. Thank you, of course, to patrons for making this and all series possible. Thank you to everybody for watching. As always, love you guys, and see you next time for the Q&A, followed by whatever show I'm lucky enough to watch next. <laughs>